All right, so today we got our new CV axles from InsaneShafts.com. You can follow them on Instagram at InsaneShafts. These are actually their first, I would say their first iteration of performance axles for the NA Miata. This fits the 94 to 2005 and it looks pretty damn good. I mean, I really have no experience with performance axles other than replacing my, um, my old Integra ones, but this looks good. It has the ABS reluctor ring on here. I don't need that because I don't have ABS for my year model, but it's okay if you have them because they don't really do much if you don't use them. So we're gonna swap this out or swap this in and the, uh, the old ones are already off. We've installed the new Keesler automation spindle, as you can see right here. And right now we don't have any, we don't have any axles because the old ones are a little bit worn. And I'm not saying that it's bad, but it's, uh, it's just a little worn and I don't like putting old stuff back in when I have new things that's already installed. So I took it off and now we just need to pop the other ones back in. The, uh, the only challenge I guess is the older Miatas, let me get back here. They have these little axle stubs. This thing, there you go. They have axle stubs. And all you gotta do really is just pry those off or use a little puller, pop them off, take the clip off, and then I swap the old ones in or the new ones in. Um, I still gotta do a, a diff oil change, I guess, because fluid's gonna come out. That's why I have the little pan right there. but. Let's get this going and uh, see how it goes. All right, first thing we're gonna do is pop out the stub axle right here and then drain the diff fluid. And then we can slide the replacement one in and call it a day. All right, so right now we're draining the diff fluid, as you can see right there. It's just oozing out. 25 year old fluid still looks pretty clean, but I guess nothing really degrades that from back here. Um, but we're gonna put Torco stuff on there because uh, or in there because I like Torco stuff. Um, better than generic, I would say, stuff you get from AutoZone or Pep Boys and whatnot. Um, you know, like my second choice would be Motul, but Torco is my first choice. They're really cool guys and I'm rocking the Torco stuff in my engine anyway, so. All right, so after this, we're gonna detach the stub and then pop in our axle. All right, so we got this axle puller this is actually a Mac unit and I got it from uh, Dan next door. There's a stub axle and uh, it's, it's pretty easy to use. You connect this side to the stub axle and then you basically just pull this sideways like a, like a hammer. And you can see, now it's gone. The only thing we need to do is replace the seal and we should be good. And we still gotta do the other side as you can see. The stub axle is still there so the other side of that puller bolt on right here and you just pull sideways and you're good. The only hard part is you gotta undo all of this or actually just a shock mount so you can just swing this whole thing out and you're good. So next thing I'm gonna do here is this is the upper control arm from V8 Roadsters that you can see right there and this is a billet piece and right here, see where this divide is? You can actually undo the back and then add shims to lengthen it, that adds more positive camber, or you set it short as possible, and then, I don't know, it depends on your suspension setup, but it could be um, less camber with less shims. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna actually shorten this side, and this is the um, the inner, inner um, heim joint, which essentially shortens the control arm, which adds more negative camber, or uh, if I lengthen it, adds more camber that way, positive. So I'm gonna shorten this because I have too much uh, positive camber right now with a new wheel setup because it, it sticks out of the fender a little bit. So I'm gonna pull it in, and I'm also going to pull in the lower control arm, as you can see right there. So let's do that right now. I got the axles installed left and right. You can see it over there with a new seal. The problem is this spring is just too long and right now I'm hitting the axle from the inside. And that's not because of the, um, the spindle or the lower control arm, it's just the whole setup is just not OEM and the fitment, you know, it, it all needs to kind of move up 
So I'm gonna get a shorter spring, that way my, uh, my axle won't hit. You can kind of see it over here. Inside over there, see where the axle shaft is? It's hitting the spring collar. So if the spring collar goes up about an inch, I should be okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get new springs from Swift Spring and uh, swap it out, shorter springs, that is. So new wheels installed and lowered on some race ramps. I'm still missing my side skirts. It's over there. But this is basically my ideal fitment. I want it just above the rubber line, but you know, it had about eight mil gap. I can't even put my finger in there. And I actually trimmed the inside of the fender liner because, well not the fender liner, sorry, the fenders. So it just slips right in. Here's the rear. And you can kind of see right there of how tight this fitment looks. It's insane. As you can see, this thing is freaking wide. All right, so home stretch with the install and the new suspension setup. Right now I got four jacks around the car, as you can see, and I have a fishing line running across each jack, as you can see. And I'm just doing a quick toe alignment here. I can't really do much about a uh, caster and whatnot using this setup, but I did already set the camber and then now I'm just checking the toe. So front to back right now, pretty even. Uh, it's about a half inch here, half inch over there. So that means I know it's tracking straight and the other side, it's perfectly the same. And then my steering wheel is straight. So, I mean, it's as close as I could get it. So on the back of the caliper right here, you can see that there's a missing fitting right in the center. And that's actually a 1 8 by 27 NPT. NPT meaning it's tapered, so it never bottoms out. The problem is it seals with the, uh, the threads, basically like a, like a very, very tight fitting, and that's how it seals with the uh, caliper. And the biggest issue with that is it sometimes seeps. So right now I have the uh, caliper fittings and some of the hoses uh, just drying I'll show you right now. Yeah, it's hard to go in and out of the freaking under the car. So what I bought was this stuff. This is basically their pneumatic sealant. Come on, get in there, focus. This is pneumatic sealant from um, Permatex and it's number 54540. Now you want this stuff because if you're using uh, say NPT fittings or any any type of pipe fitting, you want to seal it up and you don't want to use Teflon tape because Teflon tape is not good for brake fluid. This stuff is actually pretty damn good. And you don't want to use the other stuff like there's a red and blue Loctite right there. That's not for that application. Now I could show you the fittings. They're right here. So if you look closely, you'll see it right there on the threads. It's purple and it needs to dry for at least another, eh, another day or so, but at least that's what I read online. Um, the instructions doesn't say anything about letting it dry. So <laughs> we'll, we'll put it together right now. And uh, it's been about a day or so. Quick note on the setup here. You can see I have plastic bags dangling over the fenders. That's because when you work on the brake system, you don't want any of the brake fluid to touch anything. Oh, well, paint, uh, specifically, you don't want it to touch paint because it eats up the clear, but you just kind of want to avoid brake fluid touching anything. This makes life easier. So just get a bunch of bags, put around everything, especially the brake booster. The brake booster is painted and uh, that can also um, jack up the brake boosters finish. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our brake cleaner here, and then we're gonna clean up the threads that's on the back of the caliper really, really well. You wanna take off all of the residual brake fluid from there so the sealant actually has something to stick on. So let's do that right now. I might grab my GoPro for this because it's, it's kinda hard to hold the freaking camera and do all this. All right, dudes, 
So we got our brake fitting right here. Hopefully you can see that. And then our brake cleaner and we're just gonna clean the insides real quick. I don't wanna douse this thing because I don't wanna spray everything else with brake fluid or brake cleaner. And uh, I think I should get some some of these boys. Q-tips. Now, during SEMA last year, these things were all brand new. All brand new. So that would have been the time to do it. But I didn't do it then. Why? Because I was in a hurry. And also, it wasn't in the instructions. I did call the guys at Willwood and they said, use Teflon tape on this, which to me has always been a no-no to use Teflon tape in anything that's brake specific. Because Teflon tape just, just falls apart with brake fluid, just like everything else. That's why clear coat gets eaten up by brake fluid. So, it took me a while to figure out what to use and that sealant, man, it's so good. Um, I was actually wondering what, what Speed Bleeder does with their stuff. So like these nipples right here, it actually already has some sort of sealant and uh, it comes with it. And I could never find out what the hell that is until recently I've been looking and I found out that it's the Primatex stuff. But, uh, well. I'm not sure if it's 100% the same, but it's exact same chemical. Not the same brand or anything like that. But speed leaders are cool because all you have to do is crack them, boop, maybe quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter turn, and then you just pump, and there's a ball bearing inside that goes up and down, up and down, up and down, and uh, it seals it every single time. Unlike regular uh, brake bleeders where you crack it, and then you step on it, then you have to close it, and then you let go, and you step on it, and you open it, and you know, you have to do all that. Speed bleeders, you don't have to, but you have to pay for the convenience. They're not cheap, so. We have four corners to do. We're just gonna do this relatively quick. I've already vacuumed out all of the fluid all around the car, so. To be honest, that's not the funnest part. I hate working with the brake system. It sucks. Okay, so that's good. So that's basically what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do the back, and then the other side, and then I'll be back. All right, next, you wanna get yourself a few rags. I like Costco uh, microfibers because they're cheap. They work great. And you can easily tell if they're dirty because they're yellow. So what you wanna do is get some rags, wet them. That way, if you spill any brake fluid, you can just wipe it off ASAP. Brake fluid hates water. So if you spill like a bottle of brake fluid all over your paint, just douse it down with water and it neutralizes it. Ah. Boom. And I'm still trying to figure out how to cut a pineapple without wasting all the meat. Because I cut the other one yesterday and I wasted a lot of meat. <laughs> all right, let's go. All right, you guys like my socks? <laughs> Got the owl and polka dots. I get all my socks from ties.com, so if you guys are wondering where the hell I get all the fancy socks, ties.com, baby. All right, so. We're gonna pop this guy back here. Okay. Now I've been reading online that you should let these, uh, the compounds dry for a few days before you put it together, but I don't know. I had one side or one piece 
dry up for three days and it's exact same consistency as drying for one day. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bolt this in for now. I'll bolt in the brake line on this side and these I've cleaned up already. And I'll leave it dry until Tuesday. Today's Sunday, so I'll let it dry and then I'll fill it up with fluid and then evacuate the whole system. Okay, so let's tighten this up. This is an NPT fitting, so that means it's tapered like this. You won't bottom out, but the, the more you turn, the more you tighten, that the bigger the threads get, so it, it's gonna feel really tight. You don't wanna bottom this out because you're gonna jack up your fitting or you jack up your caliper, whichever. So get it to where it's good. That's a very, that's a very uh, uh, funky term because what's good for you might not be good for me and vice versa. So um, just get it tight enough, snug, not gorilla snug. Pop the other one in. Okay, and then now, you wanna make sure that this isn't like this, right? Because if you pop your wheel in, you might rub on the hose. So you wanna you wanna make sure that it's going towards the center right here. And that should be good. So we need a wrench that is a 7 16 Half. Okay, 7 16 Okay, and sometimes when you tighten these fittings right here, it tends to twist the, the whole hose. So kind of just hold on it. Or you could kind of pre-twist it, right? And kind of guess where it's gonna end up after you finish tightening it up. So that's okay. Tire goes right here. Yeah, it's good. Now this is a Dash 3 AN fitting and it doesn't seal by the threads, it actually seals by the taper of the uh, the point. I'm not sure if you guys you go back and rewind real quick and you can see, but it's not necessary to put the, the uh, sealant, but it's good insurance too. Why not? So we've replaced all the AN fittings that go to the back of the caliper, you can see right there and uh, seal them with that pneumatic sealer from Permatex. Should be good now. I don't think it's gonna leak. Uh, it's Sunday. I think I'm gonna fill this up mm, maybe Thursday or maybe next week. I'm not really in a rush because I got other things to do. So I can let that dry and kind of just take its time. Hopefully it seals up just nice and, you know, fine. All right, last thing we're gonna do is we get this marker and put a dot on the fittings so we know we've already tightened it. If you don't do that, you're gonna forget later and then you're gonna be like, oh, did I tighten it? I'm gonna have to tighten it again. You don't wanna do that. Best thing to do, sorry, put a little dot and then you'll know. It's like, oh, it's done. I don't have to mess with it. We've all been there. We've all been there and be like, oh, did I tighten it? I'm not sure. Oh crap, now I gotta take everything apart again. You don't wanna do that. Just put a dot, then you'll know it's done. Oh, tell you guys something random here. I just polished my barbecue. <laughs> yes. The OCD is real.